Hello everyone. everyone. Welcome to this screencast on streaming API support for WSO2 API manager. In this session, we will be taking a look at the whole new streaming API support that we have added in the latest release of WSO2 API manager. I am Sri Watson and I work as a senior software engineer at WSO2. In this session, we will be covering the following parts. The need for streaming API and then what streaming API is and then what are the protocols that we support for streaming API and we finish the session with a, with a demonstration. Let's see why we need streaming API. APIs commonly require a client to send a request to the server to receive new data. This client-server interaction style is common to REST-based APIs that we use today. If a client wishes to know when something new is available, then it must periodically send a request to the API or the server to check for data modifications. This pattern is known as polling and is common solution for clients that need to become aware of the new data or notified of backend events. This polling is not ideal because it's often complex. Let's say if the API is rate limited, it prevents us from making the requests often and it's inefficient and it leads to poor user experience. Constant polling of an endpoint is wasteful in terms of resources committed from the developer and also in terms of the traffic seen by the vendors. The ideal solution is to have our servers inform the API client when new data or events are available. However, we cannot do this with a traditional request response interaction style common with HTTP. The solution is Streaming API. Streaming API is an API interaction style that allows the server to inform the consumer when something has changed. As shown in the following diagram, first, the client initiates a connection with the server. Upon initiating the connection, when the server receives an event, it immediately sends the event to the client without requiring the client to pull for the data. Because of this, the changes to the data or the state and interesting business events can be pushed to the applications in real time without requiring the application to pull for the updates. WSO2 API Manager supports WebSocket, Webhook, and server sent event protocols for streaming APIs. WebSockets allow two-way communication between the server and the client. The server can publish events to the client without a request, and the client can publish requests to the server if required. WebSockets are compatible with HTTP as well. Webhooks only allows one-way communication from a caller web app to the callee web app. The client who intends to receive the events from the server has to register its URL against the interesting events so that it will be notified when an event occurs. The server sent event is similar to webhook and it only allows one-way communication from the server to the client and the client cannot send any messages to the server. Let's see a sample deployment. There will be mainly three parties involved in a setup. First, the stream provider. Stream provider will generate an event stream and publish it to the gateway via WebSockets, Webhooks or SSC protocol. Stream provider will do all the heavy lifting required to generate the final stream. It can manipulate the stream before passing it to the gateway. The second component is API Gateway. API Gateway proxies the stream provided by the stream provider to the client via either Webhooks or WebSocket or SSC protocol. It will enforce the policies and validate the message formats too. And the third and the final component is the clients. Clients will connect to this gateway to consume the streaming API via WebSocket or WebHooks or SSC protocol. 
Let's move on to a demo where we will be looking at how we can create and publish a SSC API using WSO2 API Manager. Let's discuss about the scenario. In this scenario, we have a system monitor which monitors the system and sends frequent updates about the memory usage. We need to have some sort of APIs to send these events as an update to the observers. We can think of the observers as a web app or a mobile application which receives frequent updates about the system memory usage. For this kind of usages, we can use SSC APIs because they will be keep sending the events to the observers. I have already started the API manager. Let's click on create API and under streaming API, we can select SSC API to create a server sentiment API. Let's give the API name as Observer API. Let me give the context as Observer. The version can be 100 and the protocol is SSC. We need to give the endpoint of the SSC server. Let's click on Create to create this API. If you check the URI that we use to execute the SSC server, we have the resource memory. Similar to resources that we have in REST APIs, we can define topics in streaming API. So let's create a topic called memory. The operation type is subscription. Let's create this topic and save this API. So now we have created the API. Let's deploy this API. You can see we have successfully deployed the revision 1 of the API. Let's go to the API lifecycle. We can see the API lifecycle is in created state. Let's publish this API. The API has been published successfully. Let's go to the developer portal. Let me refresh it. We have the observer API. If we click on this API, we can see the URL of the API and we can also check the API definition. So let's consume this API. To consume this API, we need to create a subscription. So let's go to the subscription tab and we'll use the default application to subscribe to this API. As we are using the default application, the keys are generated automatically. Let's go to the tryout tab and get the command to execute this API. Let's generate the access token. And this is the topic that we created earlier. And let's generate the curl command. So now we have the curl command. Let's invoke the service through WSO2 API Manager. Now you can see we are passing the authorization header. Now we have invoked the service through WSO2 API Manager and getting the same results as earlier. This is just an example. And if you go and take a look at our documentation, we have support for WebSocket and WebHook protocols as well. This ends the session. Thank you.